What up, what up? It's your boy. Thank you for joining me today. So, uh, sorry again. Yet again, a second stream in a row. My mic was not connected, so <laughs> you couldn't hear me. We got a great show tonight, um, and we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about Some Devil, how awesome that album is, every single song. And also, we're going to also look at some stats. I have compiled some data from Polestar. Shout out to some of the folks at antsmarching.org that were able to get that information, uh, which I was able to get access to and compare it to some of the data from 2019. So we're going to look at the, some, some of the 2021 top grossing locations, and then we're going to compare them to 2019. Uh, but first, we have some double. Uh, this is something that I, I put on Instagram earlier, and here I'll share my story here so you guys can see this. This is 34, and some of the best Dave Matthews chord progressions are not in the studio albums with the band. It's in his solo album, Some Devil. We're going to check some of them out here. Tune in 10 p.m. So yeah, those are some things. I just did a quick uh, mashup of those different things on Instagram this morning during a, a break at work. And um, Some Devil is not only just one of some of the best work that Dave has done, it is one of the most raw and personal albums from Dave Matthews. When you look at his full band stuff, when you look at his unreleased music, when you look at all the different projects he's done, what makes that what makes this thing so great is it's personal. It is um just it has there's so much that he reveals in the album to a level that is not just on the surface. A lot of the other music that he makes is uh, is just, you know, it's about certain subjects, but it doesn't get as deep as some of the stuff in some devil. And this is a time when this album came out, you know, Dave is really at the top of his, his popularity, right? From 2004 forward, when you look at sales of albums and you look at ticket sales, this is his, okay, I've reached the top of the music world. I've sold out stadiums. I've done a lot of different things I've wanted to do. I've gotten respect from my peers in the jam band community, which I'm, technically DMB is not a jam band. I got my respect from the mainstream all my stuff's on the radio. This is kind of the, the, the arc or the top of his career as far as popularity. And from there, 2005, six, seven, things start to kind of go down, even though it's still amazing. So you get a lot of personal things. And what I wanted to do is just show a couple of clips here as well. So we're going to look at Up and Away um, and take a look at this.
And this is this this chord progression, like it is so awesome. The chord progressions in some devil are just this album is is awesome because he's he's laid the groundwork with this first couple of, of albums, right? Of these Dave chords, right? He lays the background of his style of playing, letting the open chords play. So he's he's doing all of these things that he's done his whole career, but he's he's it's more intricate. And to me, it makes for better jams. It makes for more playability long term. The the Some Devil songs can be jammed to in such a way. And you look at his all star cast and crew here. He's got Tony Hall, and he's got uh, you know Trey Anastasio, Anastasio, excuse me, and he's got so you know Tim Reynolds and, and crew. And this music, if it was still played in 2022, if he plays up in a way, if he plays Dodo, if he plays certain songs, they will still hit in an awesome way. And I think with Buddy Strong, if they played a song like Up and Away, um, you would really get a, a just just something that fits this current band great, right? So I, I just, the, the chord progressions to me, that's why I put that little the thing together. The chord progressions are just flawless. Um, and that's really what makes the songs. Dave can write great lyrics. We know that. But it doesn't matter how good the lyrics are. If the melodies and if the if the chord structures are not good, then it, it you know, it the song doesn't hit, right? And we've seen this with some of the new music, right? When the when the chord progressions don't hit and they don't do if they don't stand the test of time, they, you know, it's not going to it's going to get old quick. And that's how I feel with some of the newer music, not the newest music, but some of the newer music from away from the world to come tomorrow. Um, so Ron, what's the chord progression? Um, so for up and away, what is this? What is this? This is a C. So that's a C. But you're doing it on the ninth fret. And then after that, this is, I think this is B. Yeah. So it's C. And then B. And then A. And then G. Yeah, so it's C. So C, B, A, G. That's the, the first one. But it is up and away is awesome. And then here's the thing. I want to go to little little thing and another thing. It is just this is another song to me. This is this is the best. This is my favorite Dave chord progression. This is my favorite Dave chord progression. Uh the, the chorus. So this is the the verse but to me this is this is so spiritual and deep and hard hitting to a way that none of the other music is and they can play this it doesn't matter how many times if they played little thing or and another thing 20 times in a tour you would still get people saying what in the world is that and to me it's going to be a decade of me going to live shows this year I've been a fan since about 2005, downloading music online or getting it from people making mixed CDs back in high school, all uh, right? But what makes Dave Matthews' band so great is when you're a new fan and you hear something like In Another Thing, or you hear something like The Stone and you're like, what is that? That's not Ants Marching. That's not Rapunzel. That's not Stay. That's not Every Day. What is that? When you go to shows, if you're a newbie, you're like, whoa, what is that? And in another thing, this this chord progression, which I want to break down, it, it utilizes the open strings. The best thing Dave does is he utilizes his open strings so that it when you play it, it has a fuller sound. So most people are playing these bar chords, which you know you can you can still hear, 
but they still they don't have that punch like open chords using all the strings like this is a c so oops sorry i hope you guys didn't hear i hit the mic so this chord this is an open e and then i'm playing this little triad so when you play this And the bass notes and it's that same thing like the gray street chords but it's 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 even further it's not just this da, 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 da. he's he's using these chords And then he's singing over it. It's so simple, yet it's so complex. And that is what Dave Matthews is at his best. Simple, yet complex at the same time. And then his beautiful voice. It doesn't matter what he's saying over this. He could be saying, your taxes are due. Attention, Ron, your taxes are due. Please pay your taxes to the state of Colorado. Inflation is at an all-time high. Sorry, Ron. All your food is going to cost 20 more dollars a week. Gas is up 50%. But it doesn't matter. Those, those chords are so beautiful, right? It doesn't matter. And the other progression, when we look at So Damn Lucky, so the so damn lucky uses open chords as these open strings again and all that is is if you hear this that's a sound of an open string no you're not playing anything on there so that's and then he goes into the again those dave gray street chords where you're you're holding these things down you're sliding up right and it's It's, so he's using those chords from Gray Street. And then uh, and from, you know, Too Much. And, and um, what else? Tripping Billies. But he, he, he goes even further. So he starts with, oh my God. And then when, from here, so this is just an open E minor. This the eight, but he goes. So he's now using, he's now using this C shape, but again, everything sounds open. And that that actually just makes everything sound fuller. And when you're jamming to this, the thing about this song too which most new DMB songs, any DMB song that I don't feel hits as well, the problem is it doesn't have enough life after the regular ver regular jam. But after the regular stuff, the chorus, verse, whatever you want us to do, at the end of this, he goes back to this jam, he goes to the E. This is a whole new song almost. And this is what jam bands do right. They make these endings that just, you can play forever. And then you can sing over it. Thank you for letting me be myself. All right. I think that's at the end, never mind. I did that anyway. But you can just, you can play that forever. And that outro is so damn lucky still is a one of the highest parts of a of any sort of any sort of show so dave the usage of his chords his chord progressions the depth of these songs as we heard dodo in the intro of this uh stream right the songs just all are unique even though they 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 hone in on some of what dave does in all of his music but they're this is such a unique album but it still feels like it's a Dave Matthews album. 
And that's what makes some double great is it, it just it expands on what what made the band the best band at, of its time and in so many different ways. And, and how it crossed over from the people who like the, the traditional jam band and people who like popular music all going to the same show. Some devil brings in everybody. There's something for everybody in some devil. And when you hear Trey jam out to some of this stuff, um, like up and away, when we get to here, Trey is having a ball. So all of this music is able, a guest can come in. Dave and his friends are jamming right here. It's every song on this, on this album just is either it's a nice ballad or encore one song like O oh, or like Up in a, uh, or Some Devil, which is the title track. And Some Devil, just Some Devil in Trouble, those two songs in different ways, the way they resonate out, when you put a little bit of reverb and you really hear it echo out onto the crowd, these songs really hit to the soul. So you have those songs, Some Devil in Trouble, they're just songs that hit you in the soul. You hear it in the encore one spot, even though they don't play Trouble, right? Dave and Tim have played it um, a couple years ago. But those two songs, they're just personal, deep, I mean, this, this album, and I know many of you guys, like this album, even though it was made in the, you know, with 2003, right? Yeah. Even though this album came out in 2003 and I wasn't even checking for it, this album helped me when I was 22, 23 years old when it came to, two, uh, what was that, 2012 and 2013 when I was going through so many different things. My first break heart, big heartbreak trying to figure out my career path. This album got me through. And I know, let's see what Justin says. Someone say, okay. So Justin says, I had a bad but lucky bike accident 10 years ago. I think about it every time I hear so damn lucky, so grateful. And, th and that's the thing is that's a very, and we're glad that you're, you, you were able to overcome that, right, Justin? And that's the thing is these that song just hits people. And, and, and there's so many different ways that you can hit that song, whether it is an auto accident, a bike accident. Um, and I'm glad that you're okay because I know from uh, people who ride bikes and um, listen, some these, some of these drivers, and I used to be a, a claims adjuster for auto claims. I know I've seen wrecks. Um, not, I didn't go on the scene of them, but I've seen videos and I've seen like the actual aftermath. So I know how, you know, with, when these, a lot, 90% of the time it's the, uh, it's the car, right? It's, it's not the, the cycle, although some people ride bikes straight. But anyway, point is you're okay. But th that is a, that's a memory. And um, some devil, I think about again, without my first heartbreak, the first girl I ever loved and it not working. Right. And everything happens for a reason. Right. I, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm past that way past that. Right. I'm good. Man. <laughs> but the point is, I remember when I listen to some devil, I remember you said always and forever. like that song gives me chill. It doesn't matter how many times Dave plays it. He could play it every encore. It will still give me the chills. Right. And what does Justin say? I've been playing. Uh, DMB on guitar for 15 years. Only in the past few months, I've realized I've been playing it all wrong. I had to relearn it, everything the correct way. DaveTabs.com is definitely the best. Uh... Oh, this was a mountain bike. Okay. Oh, you fractured your neck. Wow. Six feet before my right there. Oh, your fiance. Oh, I bet. Oh, mountain bike. But still, I mean, mountain bikes, listen, um, I have some friends who who are uh, skiers and snowboarders and adventurers and and, and go on different types of treks like that. So I know with some of the the necks, the, the collarbone, right? I have a couple of friends who are in hot playing hockey. 
um, and also skiing, snowboarding, the collarbone, but neck, oh, man, wow. But, but glad you're okay. But yeah, e either way, like, yeah, it's a it's a thing. Like, it, it, it sticks with you. Grave digger. She married me anyway, he says. Yeah, hey, hey, it all worked out, right? <laughs> it all worked out. That's awesome. But um, yeah, so it's just these songs are very personal. These songs have so many different things. Grave Digger is just another deep song, right? Um, uh, from this, this, and then um, Save Me is just another simple song that that just it's a simple groove, but it just you could you can listen to it forever. Then you got the F. Like, it's just an awesome little thing. Every song on this, to me, can be played, and I'll be fine with it. Even O, and I know sometimes the O, like, some when I've heard O in the moment, I try to appreciate it. I've heard it a couple of times. I've been very fortunate to hear it a couple of times, and I think like maybe three or four times. But you're like, ah, oh, but it's such a beautiful song. It's about, it's about Dave's grandfather and grandmother. His grandmother passed away before his grandfather and it's just a song about how his grandfather loved her to the end. And to the end, it wasn't looking good, but he still held her and he loved her. So um, just another, these songs are very personal, but that's what makes them so great is that um, they're just so personal. So that's what we got. I'm going to end this segment here for some devil, but I just think, again, the jams, the grooves, the personal feeling of this is, is my favorite thing. I don't like some of the cliche stuff Dave does. I do like some of like I like 41 and there's some cliches in there. I don't like some of the cliche like you and me. I I I don't, I don't like that song. I, I just don't like it. I, I don't like it. Right? It's too cliche. I like the deep, dark, personal stuff. And and um oh, you just played O for your kids. I yeah. So um yeah, high B, and there's a lot of high B in here. You have O, you have stay or leave. Um, some devil is high B on the baritone, right? Uh, Grave digger too high or standard, and another thing standard. Uh, save me standard. Grave blue. I don't know if grave blue eyes is standard or not. Um, and I believe Dodo may be raised B. It may be yeah high B or raised B. But yeah, that's what we got for um, some devil appreciation. What I want to do now is I want to bring up. A what I want to do is bring up this um 2021 attendance co compilation I was able to put together. First off, thanks again to the folks in antmarcher.org that pulled some of this data, and gave some links so I could look up some of this. This information was found via Polestar. Um, they compile a lot of data. It's hard to get this data, and sometimes you have to actually pay for it to get it. Um, and I may try to look into getting, because I, I will pay, for, depending on what the cost is, I would love to see some of this information. As I am a live music head, a lot of my favorite artists like Chris Stapleton, J. Cole, Dave Matthews Band, uh, sometimes when Jay-Z does tour, you'll see Jay-Z on here as far as the top 10, top 15, top 20 tours. Um so um, I think I'm going to try to look into for next year or, or see if I can get a subscription because it's it's data that I love. And if you, if you watch my channel, you know I love data. Um, but um, I want to pull up this information and go over it. And we're going to compare the 2020 numbers to the, the 2019 numbers to see what happens. Put in the chat if you think that attendance, if you think attendance went up, from 2019 to 2021, or if you think it went down, I want you guys to put that in the chat. We'll get to that in a, at the end of this presentation. Uh, here, let me just pull up here. What is this? Okay, so the gross attendance figures. And before we get to this as well, DMB had the fourth highest attendance of 2021 as far as the poll star ratings for tours. There were 583,399 tickets. 
They were behind Harry Styles, Green Day, Weezer, Fall Out Boy, that's the Hella Megator, and Dead & Company. DMB had the eighth highest grossing tour of 2021 with 46 million. Average crowd size was 14,229 out of 41 reported shows, not including the festivals. And um, <clears throat> okay, so Justin thinks the tenants went up. So this was the overall overview here of. Um, and let me know if anything is blocking this. Let me know. If you guys can't see the top of the screen, let me know. Um, but these are the overalls. And we're going to go through these from top to bottom. Now, this is the data that I was able to find. Whatever is not on here, I can't get vouch for what, what was, you know, what some of those other shows were. So first, we got to keep in mind a couple of things. The venue capacities are estimates. These are rough estimates of the capacity. The reason I say that is venues can cap the amount of tickets sold slightly below what a lawn capacity is and still be considered a sellout. Because I know in Hartford, right, in theory, the Hartford lawn, you could sell with by fire code 22,000 tickets to the Hartford lawn. Now, for an event like Farm Aid, what I saw was from 2019 to 2021, I went to both of those in Hartford. They sold less lawn tickets in 2021 due to so, to try to get less people in to prevent more crowding. And also in the lawn area, the first year, 2019, so many people bring lawn chairs to Farm Aid because it's such a long event. It's not a two-hour concert, right? It starts around noon and ends around 10, 30, 11 o'clock. So, so many people bring lawn chairs as they cut the the they cut the actual lawn, what was sold for that lawn. So a venue may have an original fire code that you could sell 15,000 lawn tickets, but they may only sell 12,000 lawn tickets. And if they sell 12,000, they call it a sellout. And again, it's up to the discretion of the, the promoters in the, in the venue uh, to what they sell. So again, some of these percentages may be off because I don't know what they sold. Also, the two to three night stand numbers are combined for each stop. So you may see uh, 53,000 tickets sold. That may be across three nights of the gorge. You may see 40,000 tickets sold for a SPAC type venue, but that's for two nights. That doesn't mean they sold 40,000 in one night. Um, so this is what we had for what we believe are the top. So coming at the first one on this list, the Xfinity Center in Mansfield, Massachusetts. Okay. This show attendance was 19,321 attendees. Gross sales, one, $1,661.277. And the gross sales is another thing to look at. Depending on what type of seat is available is going to impact the gross sales. When you can sell more pit tickets, you're going to get more gross sales from the pit. If you have more um, pavilion seats, you're going to get more mid-level or upper level. And one thing about the Xfinity Center, which makes it a which I think it's why it's on this list. What they did at the Xfinity Center back in, I think it was the 90s, it used to be called Great Woods. They added open air seating on the lawn, the front part of the lawn, and they, they charge, I think it's like $75, $85 last I checked for those seats. And they're really like, to me, unless I had a real tough issue getting a ticket, I would rather either just be on the lawn or be in the, in the, the lower, like the covered pavilion. So because they have all these open air seats, Xfinity Center does make a little extra cash than they could have made back in its early stages of this venue, even before DMB was there, because they actually built seats on the lawn. So you have 90, you have 97% of the tickets were sold. And the show occurred on July 16, 2021. I was there. Awesome show, stone opener, two-step set closer. Um, so 19,321. And this is one of the higher. Uh, percentage of tickets sold, but it's it's also a venue that has a smaller lawn because again the open air. And when there's more seats, if you can fill up the seats, the big the hardest thing for these shows is the lawn. Most of the seats are sold out, but the lawn is the hardest. Um, and this show to me, um, when I was there, there were definitely people that 
there may have been some empty seats here and there, people who just didn't show up to this show. This was rescheduled a couple of times, but 19,321. As we go down, the numbers are going to go up. So the, the gross sales, this is all based on gross sales. Next up, we have PNC Banks Arts Center in Holmdale, New Jersey, attending 16,706. Gross sales, $1,326,076. Uh, so this show, 95% of the tickets were actually sold. Again, what's interesting is some of these lower ranked shows, as far as gross sales, they sold most of the seats. And um, that's pretty interesting for these bottom two, 97 and now 95% based on the approximate listed capacity of 17,500. Um, and again, you may have seen more empty seats because again, it was rescheduled. This was a midweek show. Um, so home down New Jersey. Next, we're going to go. This was the show before, right? Because we had the yeah, 921 Northwell Health at Jones Beach Theater in Wontag, New York. Attendance was 13,209. And the gross sales, $1,350,575. Now, what you'll notice is this. 88% of the tickets sold... They sold less tickets for Jones Beach than they did for Homedale. What's the big difference? If you know, does anyone know the difference between Homedale and Jones Beach? Does anyone know why why uh, they would sell more, sell less tickets but gross more? Does it, anyone any anyone go to Jones Beach? The reason that this one is more is because there actually is no lawn at Jones Beach. Every seat is actually a seat. There may be some like VIP decks and things like that. Yeah, so Connor, yeah, Connor just said it. Jones Beach is all seats. Yep, it's all seats, meaning, again, your gross sales are going to go up. And this is some of the things that the band is going to consider when, when they look at your venue compared to other venues. If you have a venue like Jones Beach, there wasn't, we, we talked to Aria, if you go to my post-show stream from, from September 21st, we talked to Aria and she said, look, it was more of a casual base. A lot of people, this was their first show. Jones Beach is really like, Long Island is really just like a separate part of, the, of New York from even New York City. It is just this whole different thing. And I've been on there. I'll actually be going down there hopefully for Monday for a Flyers-Islanders game if it doesn't get postponed. Uh, Flyers are on COVID protocol. Anyway, let's go Flyers. But it is all seats. So that means the, the highest seat in the venue is going to be much more than a lawn seat, right? They can charge $85 for the worst seat at Jones Beach, where the cheapest seat at most venues is going to be about $40 plus fees, right? Even the gorge is $40 plus fees get you in. Jones Beach, the worst seat, you're going to have to pay around $85 unless the prices go down closer to the show. So now we're going to get into a two-night stand. I actually went to this two-night stand. Uh, this is, again, this is the next one up. And this is Bank of New Hampshire Pavilion. So it's Bank of New Hampshire Pavilion in Guilford, New Hampshire. Live free or die. Um, and again, what's interesting is you have a, a show where Less tickets were sold than Homedale, but the key with Guilford is, first of all, you have more premium seating. Every seat that is fixed or nailed into the ground is a is a really, really nice seat. And also, you have two-night stand. You have a two-night stand. Um, the capacity is 9,000. You have a two-night stand, so you have two nights. But even the less overall attendance, you have more seats that can be charged more for, Right? Every seat at this venue is close. The lawn is very small. So the two nights combined 14,000 people, which is pretty good for out there. Uh, the venue is in the middle of no, well, no, it's not in the middle of nowhere. It's up in Lake Winnipesaukee. But when you go a couple of miles anyway from Lake Winnipesaukee, you may see some cottages, things like that. But there's there's a whole, it's a whole world away from the main cities in New Hampshire. It's a it's a it's a summer town, but 
the majority of New England is south of it. The population in Boston and in Nashua, New Hampshire, and Manchester, New Hampshire, they got to drive. And they do drive up, right, because it's closer. But it's a smaller venue and a smaller market than others. But you have 82% of the tickets sold. And a lot of this was, uh, I think, the lawn area, which there seemed to be a lot of space um, there. And then, again, some of the seats in the back corners, things like that. This was a midweek show, pair of shows, so not everyone can take that week, midweek off, especially a lot of our, our people that have certain uh, jobs that are required during the week. It's hard to get time off during the pandemic for some people. So you have this, and, and you have 1,366,409 people that were uh, came between the 24th and the 25th. Um, there, oops, I got I forgot to put the, the, the dash in there. I got to proof you a little better. All right, so next up, uh, we have, let me just make sure, Mohegan Sun Arena. I was also at this two-night stand. This one edged out uh, Guilford. And again, another midweek, another midweek uh, setup. The other interesting thing about Mohegan is also what happens is with Mohegan Sun, any tick, a lot of the tickets are available to high rollers that are in a certain type of club at Mohegan. My ex girlfriend's uncle and grandmother were in this club. I got to see Green Day for free. I got to see Lincoln Park for free. These are awesome bands that I love. I almost saw Rush for free, but her, her uncle, my ex's uncle, was sick. And the person, if you show up the day of the event with ID and you're a high roller or you, you gamble a lot at the casino, they will give you complimentary tickets or discounted tickets to go to shows. So this one sold a lot because even though there were still tickets that were left from people that had to cancel when, when 2020 was postponed and people could get refunds, people did opt for those refunds. There were a lot of tickets available closer to the show, but they had people from the Casino High Rollers Club eat up those tickets There you and you get the 1,758,738. Now it's 77% of the tickets sold. The other thing about this is um, with this, the list of capacity is 10,000. This venue can vary because they do have concerts in the round. I think there was more than 77% of the tickets sold. I can't confirm it, but I just had to go by the, the list of capacity. Most shows are around 8,000 people. Um, also, the, the floor wasn't a GA pit. That's the other thing too. So I don't know if there was actually 10,000 potential tickets that could have been sold, but it was pretty close. It was between, I think, between eight and 10,000 available tickets if everyone would have bought a ticket um, there. And again, that Casino High Rollers Club made up a lot of the the uh, of the, the fill-ins for extra seats. And a lot of those people left early, but the energy there was amazing. So there we go, Mohegan Sun. We're going to go next up to West Palm Beach, Florida. It's a two-night stand again. So we have 30,816 uh, people combined attendance across the two, two nights. Gross sales, 1,940,815. The big thing you'll notice between this and this is the number. Look at that. There's only about two 200,000 more, right? So we have 1,758,788. And, and then we get to 1,940,000. It's only about 200,000 more in sales, and it's double the people. But what, what's key about this is these shows had, you know, they have a lawn, right? They have a bigger lawn. They have a huge lawn area that just almost is like the size of the Mohegan show, right? And you just have the other seats that are available across two nights, double it. So you're double, it's a bigger venue. Right, twenty thousand versus ten thousand is two times as long as big, so you have twice as many available tickets. So when you have that seventy-seven percent, just like Mohegan, we go back seventy-seven for ten thousand, seventy-seven for twenty thousand. You're gonna get a little bit. You're gonna get really to that. That's where that two hundred thousand more in sales comes in. So there were cheaper tickets in the lawn, where Mohegan has all seats and a GA area at the, at the front. So that's where you get the, the smaller gap between this and Mohegan is because Mohegan is all seats. This one has a lawn, but it has a lot more tickets. And 77% of those sold um, you know, there for 
West Palm Beach. Next up, we have Spickety SPAC. And um, I already have my hotel for SPAC 2022 based on the rumored tour date. So we have 35,253 uh, fans combined. So it's a little bit, it's, it's a little bit more than it's like 5,000 or so more than uh, West Palm Beach. Gross sales, 2,186,283. So we this is the first one to break 2 million. We have 1940, we have 2186. So 2,186,283. 70% of the tickets sold. Now, here's the thing about SPAC. If you haven't been, the amphitheater itself is sold out. All the seats inside the pavilion are sold out. The pit is sold out, right? You can't find tickets, right? They actually keep some tickets and they mark them up and you know so that scalpers can't you know some of these tickets they just mark as premium seats so that they don't get flipped right and then close to the show they go down and they get dropped like a couple days before the show you may find a drop for that ticket that was up charged the platinum seat goes down to face value so a fan can buy it closer anyway long story short the actual inside of the theater is sold out what does get limited especially over the years is the lawn ga area SPAC is a venue where you literally, you know, you have, they sell all these tickets for the lawn, but over 15,000 seats they'll sell for the lawn. But the problem is if you're not there early and if you're not at the front, you're pretty much back behind trees. And let me show you guys the SPAC lawn just to give you guys an idea of how how wild it is uh here and it's a very small space that's really what it is so if we we put this up right this is part of the lawn you see these people sit in here you can't see all you're looking at is a tv screen because the problem with spac is the upper balcony the upper balcony covers the actual stage. So you're just listening to music. And if this thing is sold out, this is where a lot of people are looking. And now they don't allow for a lot of chairs at SPAC because it's so crowded, like especially up close. A lot of people would just have to be in the back. This is a different uh, one. But this is the lawn. Now, this is the lawn. This is a slow, this is a more like, they have a lot of arts. That's why it's Performing Arts Center. They have a lot of ballet and stuff and they'll get less people. But these are actual seats. Now let's go to this one. This is what DMB looks like. This is exactly what DMB looks like. This is this is the lawn, and this is again. You're supposed to fit fifteen thousand people, right, in front of these little poles or columns, right. So and then and you see the trees. People are back to the trees. The concessions are behind trees. So it's it's something where. Now, this is, again, a look at a, a symphony. And look, from here, on a, in a symphony show, you can actually see the stage. In an actual DMV show, you can't see the stage because everyone's standing up here. That's just a little uh, full disclosure about SPAC. Is the reason it doesn't sell out the lawn is because most lawn tickets aren't worth it. And the tickets for lawn are 40 bucks plus fees. You're, getting, you're paying out around 50 bucks just to be in a standing room. It's like... At a boxing match, you can buy a, you can go to a, like a VIP room in the casino next to the arena and watch a closed circuit, like the closed circuit television version of the match. And you can pay like a hundred, two hundred dollars just to be next to the arena in, in a nice like VIP area, right? You can pay a hundred, two hundred. That's exactly what the SPAC lawn is to me. You can hear the, you can hear the music. I, I still would never buy it, uh, a ticket to the SPAC lawn. You can hear the music, but you can't see anything. You can see the TV screen. You can see the screen, the projector screens, if they're working, if they're solid, but that's it. You don't actually get to see the band. So that's why you don't have SPAC sell out anymore, but you have SPAC fill up and really look. When you're at a show at SPAC, and I've been in the balcony a couple of times, when I walk out to the to concessions and walk back to my seat during like a um, you and me type song, I will see you like, wow, this thing is packed. So that's what I say with SPAC. 70% sold the first one to crack 2 million. Next up, we have five point, 
Let me make sure. Yeah, Five Point Amphitheater. This is in Irvine, California. I'm so glad Southern California got a two-night stand that's not a festival. Two specific DMB shows back-to-back, September 10th and 11th. Listed capacity is 12,000. So 90% of that was sold between the 21,714 tickets sold that weekend. You get $2,303,095 for this one. And um, this is a show where um, a lot of this is seating, right? The lawn, I believe, is a very small part. So if it's mostly seating, you're going to get mostly higher price tickets. That's why Irvine is ahead of them. And you're like, oh, Irvine's ahead of SPAC? That's crazy. But again, SPAC is an intimate venue. So that's where this venue will, will, will sell more um, you know, tickets physically um, out there in Irvine, out in Orange County, Cal. I, think, I believe that's Orange County, California, because it's not LA County. It's, I think it's Orange. Yeah, it's Orange County. Or An- it's either Orange or Anaheim County out there using my uh, geography skills. So next we have Colorado. This venue, Fiddler's Green, people say, well, DMB go back to Red Rocks. Number one, the first reason they won't go back to Red Rocks is because that venue is hard to load up all the equipment from. It's a pain in the neck to unload all that stuff because of how it's a smaller stage and it's a it's hard, it's like a climb to get up there. That's reason number one, they'll never do Red Rocks again, most likely, unless it's like some sort of special one-off or it's Dave and Friends or Dave and Tim. Number two is because Fiddler's Green is raking in the money for DNB. They have made so much money over the last, I would say, five or six years. Um, they haven't played every year, I believe, but they've most years they've, they've tried to fit this in. They did play Dick Sporting Goods Park. I believe that's what it's called, the Colorado Rapids Soccer Civic Stadiums. But this one has been the mainstay. They've had some great sh- sets here, including this past year. This one has great sales, 92% of the tickets Based on that capacity, I believe these may have been sellouts or close to sellouts as far as how they were billed to the public after the, the show or dirt right before the show. But this is a, a cash cow for the West Coast. Now, we saw Irvine, but Fiddler's is going to be that cash cow. And again, it's two nights, the gorgeous three nights. The gorgeous is going to be above this, spoiler alert. But this is a high grossing show. This is a, this is a green friendly state. And it was ahead of the curb. So that's another thing that people love making that this a destination trip um, there because you have it's green friendly and it's been like that. And they have the most establishments for dispensaries and all that type of stuff. And it's just a cool place, right? Colorado. This is the Denver metropolitan area. So we have 33,473, 2,416,649, and again, 92% for fiddlers. Next up, we have Chirac. Chicago, Illinois. This venue is horrible, from what I've heard from people. We, uh, you know, we've talked to people. I've talked to people as well, like Jesse. Shout out to Jesse on Twitter, um, and he's my Facebook friend. He lives down the block. He saw me running. Jesse, shout out to Jesse. He saw me running one day. He's a couple of towns over from me. So um, Jesse came from um, Western Mass. His girlfriend's from was used to live in Chicago because she moved out here to New England. To, to uh with jesse and so they go back to chicago and they you know they they went to this show but this this venue is horrible as far as it's flat it can get windy it got rainy and things can get moved around in the first night they had to cut the show sh- short because of storms but this show makes money two million seven hundred and fifty five that uh thousand nine hundred and fifty nine dollars it is high on this list northerly island it's north uh it's in the northern part of the, the gross sales for this band 58 percent of the tickets were sold from what the projected capacity now this is this list of capacity to me i have a feeling that it's not what dmb sells or what they sold for tickets because this is like the maximum capacity for it i don't know if they would try to sell thirty thousand um here and the lawn area is very sketchy it's not that it's very far and it's not a good view and this venue like i said is very flat so i don't know if this is it could be more than 58 uh, percent oh it's a bottleneck leaving the place connor says yeah and the thing is it's on an island off of chicago so you have to get back onto the main part 
it's I know it's walkable, but yeah, it's bottleneck, and I know it's by Soldier Field, so it's right on the uh, on the Lake Michigan. Um, is that Lake Michigan? Yeah, Lake Michigan. But the thing is, this like this venue is not as good as um, some of the other venues in the area, um, like the other one in Tenley Park, Illinois, which they play here and there. But it sells a lot, right? So um, there you go for Chicago. Next, we're going to go to Deer Creek. 82% of what we think the tickets are listed for is sold. Although that lawn, anytime you see Deer Creek, the lawn looks packed. So I don't know if that, I believe venues like Hartford. Now, Deer Creek has more sales than Hartford right now. That's why it's still a two night stand. That's why it grossed 2,761,193. That's why it has 41,094 of ours attendance. But um, Deer Creek did not, as far as from what their capacity was in its best day based on the fire code, it did not sell out that. But I don't know what they sell. And I know Deer Creek is, again, one of the highest selling lawns. They sell the majority of that lawn out. Um, and that's hard to do. Alpine doesn't really come close to selling out their lawn anymore. Uh, based on the last couple of years, Alpine has been a possibility or been an actual venue stop. So 82%. But again, you go to Deer Creek, the thing's full. The energy was crazy for people I talked to. We had John Dix on after the shows. Um, and uh, uh, DMB Mamas, Leia, uh, was also, I believe, I think we called her, uh, and Granny. Uh, shout out to them for one of the nights. But they said the crowds were the biggest thing. The crowds were amazing, high energy. People who went to Raleigh and Deer Creek said, like, Deer Creek was that marker of the tour. But wow, this actually topped Raleigh's energy. And it's because it's Deer Creek. That's why. All right. So next up, we have Madison Square Garden. I went to night two of this, did not go to night one. Finally checked off on the bucket list. DMB at MSG. I've seen Billy Joel twice. I've seen UConn basketball uh, play there and win an Elite Eight game. I've seen a Knicks playoff game. But finally getting DMB was an awesome accomplishment. 30,981. Now, this is one I'm, I just put percent of the tickets sold unknown um, because Madison Square Garden is a unique uh, setup. I have sat behind the stage for Billy Joel. I've sat, I got floor seats for Billy Joel and I sat behind the stage for Billy Joel and both awesome views, right? But I believe the 20,000 person capacity is when you have a concert in the round, meaning they will sell tickets all around 360 degrees across, even if the, the stage is at one end, right? I know there's some shows that have the center stage where this it's like at, the stage is at center court and they just have a GA pit. But I, I think 20,000 is when you can sell all across. DMB does not do this because of their project, because of their the way the stage is set up. And I think they just, did, they don't want to, compromise uh the views from behind the stage so dmb does not do that so i don't believe it's twenty thousand. these shows to me were, were pretty much sold out i think they were i have to check if they actually let me see if they look at the venue man. i was there i thought they said something about sold out tour Archived. It doesn't show now because when I look at the archives, it doesn't say sold out. But I know I know shows sold out. They listed them as sellouts. Anyway, neither here nor there. But um yeah, so three million. This is the first across three million. When we look at that, two million, and there's so Madison Square Garden, I, I'm going to say unknown, but 3,413,313 now. Um, oh, let me, I'll be right back because I want to show you guys the, there was a price difference in these tickets.
your boy's back. So the big thing with this being the gross sales higher, this is, uh, I'm going to cover up my warehouse number. Where's the purse? If you look here, I don't know if you guys can see that. That's $125. That's for a GA pit ticket to Hart to uh, Mansfield. I mean, uh, Mohegan Night 2. Now, it's $125 for that, that ticket I bought. I purchased the ticket like two years ago. It got to me this year. I mean, last year. This one is $135. This is Mo this is Master Square Garden. You probably can't see it, but it says $135. So the ticket prices were went up about $10 or so from $125 to $135. Sometimes Madison Square Garden is just more expensive. The face value of it can be a little higher because it's Madison Square Garden and it's an amazing arena and it's New York City. But I do believe the ticket prices will jump up a little bit. It could be just those $10. But I wouldn't be shocked. Hope, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Just like I was wrong about no DMB in 2021. I hope I'm wrong and the ticket prices actually go down. But the ticket prices went up $10. So just being that, some of the boost $10 per ticket, you know, and you look at, if we bring out our calculator, All right, so we do ten dollars times thirty-six. Oh, sorry. Ten dollars times thirty-eight or thirty-nine eight one. Right. Ten extra dollars per ticket. That's three hundred and nine thousand eight hundred and ten dollars just by adding isn't that the math ten dollars yeah if you charge ten thousand ten dollars to those amount of seats that's a lot more money just by raising the price so that um that is a huge thing with msg uh for those shows on november 12th and november 13th and number one is the gorge amphitheater it's just the clear cut number one uh, we have 56,270 uh, combined attendance. Now, a couple of things with the Gorge. Some people bought lawn tickets. Now, it's it, the thing is the Gorge is always going to look full, just like SPAC. Um, however, what I will say is there are people, not many, but there are still a couple hundred people that will consider buying a lawn ticket just to get in the venue to get the poster, go back to the campgrounds, then enter in with their premium seat because these posters are priceless. And some of them you could flip. If you got the triptych and you got all three of the triptych and you paid $30 a night for the lawn seat. And I actually, some of the lawn seats were let, they were like 20 bucks on StubHub. I bought one of the nights on StubHub because it was just so cheap the, 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 the weekend of. So you, so now that ticket already been purchased, but people buy tickets just to get in for the lawn. People buy three day lawn passes, and sometimes they just they ended up canceling. And uh, we'll talk about that in the next slide, or or no, a couple of slides from now about people not showing up at the gate, uh, no shows as they call them. But um, this is obviously going to be the top one because it's three nights, four million eighteen thousand one hundred sixty two dollars. And 68% um, of the tickets were sold based on the listed capacity, 27,500. And over the years, the gorge capacity, like what I've heard is the gorge attendance has gone down. Um, just because it's like, it, like back in DMB's heyday, this was it. But after people have gone, you know, as the, the band has leveled off, attendance had to cut venues, had to cut two night stands. 
and the, the trip is to me it's it's feasible but it's a lot of work and it is a, it's a big investment on labor day weekend so you, you have less people that actually make it out even though there's new people every year right but keep in mind some of this some people do buy a lawn ticket and that counts towards the sales some people did buy tickets just don't end up going um so it is what it is um there but that is the gorge is going to be number one it's a three night stand the only three night stand of the tour there we go so here we go 2019 to 2021 so if you said that attendance went up in 2021 you were correct deer creek uh 38 38 480 in 2019 to 41,094. West Palm Beach got about 3,000 from the 27 to 30. And oh, I forgot to take out that 26 to 27. That was the dates. Um, then we have SPAC, 34 to 35, so a little bit more um, from that. Mansfield, Mass, 17 to 19. I couldn't, there's probably more data that I would have to grab at to see the gorge and all those. But um, those were kind of ones I saw that that stood out and that did jump up. So overall, they did sell some of these venues better than in 2019. And some of these venues weren't repeated. Like they didn't do MSG in 2019. That's the 2019 versus 2020 uh, again, a trend upward of tickets sold. Now, in conclusion, ticket sales up overall as far as the physical tickets that were sold. The amount of no shows is unknown. I do know people that could not make shows. If you saw Mohegan Sun, which was can't, they actually moved one of the shows from one night to another night so they could do a private event at Gillette Stadium. So they moved it from one date to another. And some people who were healthcare workers, first responders, they couldn't switch that night back. I think it was about a month before the show or two months before the show. They said they're 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 switching the date of night two. So night two was supposed to be night one and night um you know night night two was moved to a monday and then night two was supposed to be a tuesday anyway well no, night one was supposed to be tuesday night two was supposed to be wednesday but they moved night two from wednesday to monday so night one became night two night two was moved to night one and that's how your boy got rail for night two is because my ticket was supposed to be um for night one uh, so there we go. But um, anyway, that's a big thing. A lot of people did not show up. A lot of people said, look, it's not worth it to me. I don't feel safe. And I respect everyone's decision, whether you, you wore a mask, whether you didn't wear a mask, whether you're vaccinated or not. You Everyone had a freedom to do what they wanted to do. And um, But some people felt they didn't feel safe traveling and they just decided to eat their tickets or sell them. But you, certain tickets for Mohegan, you couldn't give them away the day of the show. Um, they were these tickets were very very cheap for the uppers. The lowers you could, you could get people to buy, but a lot of shows, including Guilford, New Hampshire, people were trying to get rid of these tickets, and they didn't all sell. So the no shows is unknown. The p pandemic did create a higher demand because we sat out in 2020 and we're like, wow, we need to have like we wow this may be the last year. That's what I did with the gorge. I wasn't planning to go to the gorge, even though it was the most painful being an adult, waited out, sit it out, concert Viz 34 moment. I said, I just went to the gorge in 2019. I'm not going to go in 2020. Bella Fleck and the Flecktones was supposed to tour anyway in the in my area in 2020 before the, the big pandemic. And I was like, it's going to be painful because I know that Bella is going to play and I'm going to eat. I'm just going to say no. It was extremely painful. I hope they're not announced this year. I really do. Because I'm not going to the gorge this year. Right? I, I need to have, I have too much of America I need to explore. And my goal is to have a family soon. So um, I'm not going to the gorge next year. My money and resources are going to other places to explore. Anyway, Alpine is one of them. I'm going to be driving, flying into either Chicago, Wisconsin, and doing some, some driving around there. So I say all that to say that the pandemic said, look, after that year of no concerts, after saving up money and being dis disciplined during the pandemic, and um, even though I, I lost my job, I found another job, 
um, at the end of 21. So long story short, I still went to more shows. I went to 10 shows. That's the most I've ever done in a single year. So people did, it did create higher demand. More tickets were sold. We'll see what happens this year. Uh, I know, I know Alpine is going to get people. I know some people are going to go to certain places, but it'll be interesting to see if it levels off. My, my hunch was at the beginning of 2020 is that a lot of the shows did not sell out for the initial on sale in 2020. And I thought there was going to be a little drop in demand slightly, right? The big events are going to get a lot of stuff. But I thought that Ticketmaster was in a position where at the time, dead end company tickets were overpriced, overmarked, and closer to the show, they had to lower those prices. Um, John Mayer, same thing. Certain in, Look, John Mayer is amazing, right? But they had tickets were high and some tickets had to be lowered down. The dynamic pricing was not working for Ticketmaster at the beginning of 2020. In 2019, it wasn't working. People were calling the bluffs and outside of the major cities, it wasn't working. But then the pandemic hit and people really wanted to go back to shows. And even with the pandemic and even people want to go back to shows, there still are some low demands for shows. There still are some shows that go up at the beginning, the on sale FOMO. People are so sad. But then over time, the ticket prices drop because not everyone's buying the tickets for the crazy prices. So we'll see what happens uh, here. But that is what I have as far as my slideshow. Um, I'll be on Saturday as well and Saturday 10 PM. So the, the main goal now is 10 PM Wednesday, 10 PM Saturday, a fish video will be dropping Thursday or Friday. I'll be dropping a video talking about, um, what is it? MoMA dance and actually playing. You'll see some clips of me playing, uh, MoMA dance in that video. Um, so I'll have a fish video that I'll try to do either once a week or once every other week. And then we're going to get the DMBs in. I may be on Tuesday. If a tour announcement happens and I'm able to take time aside, I know I can do it this Tuesday. It is rumored that Tuesday the 18th is going to be when they drop the tour dates. Um, so if it is the case, I will go live at some point during that day. I can't guarantee right after right when it's announced, but I will, I will go live if there is a tour date announcement but saturday i will be back here 10 p.m and um stay tuned twitter and instagram i'll tell you more about that show once i get certain stuff nailed into place for that show as far as what we'll talk about uh for that show uh but thank you guys for the support definitely like comment subscribe hit the like button what that does it gets me more exposure it gets more people to um see my video all right, it's not for my self-esteem, it's for exposure and to grow this channel. Do it. So make sure you, you hit that like button. Do it. Make sure you hit the like button. Do it. Boy. Hold up. Do it. All right, so um, thank you guys again. I cannot thank you guys enough. Uh, shout out to people I had an awesome conversation. We'll actually look at that possibly for Saturday. Had an awesome conversation about two-step. Uh, with some people on uh, Instagram Live, people who agreed, disagreed, had different things, a great conversation about what's the best two-step. Uh, so thank you guys. If some of you guys are watching now, I appreciate you supporting it. But this channel is about live music. I'm going to share John Mayer. I'm going to share Dave Matthews Band. I'm going to share the different concerts I go to and give reviews. I'm Freeze McGee. I have a show coming up for that. Everything, you know, goes well. But main thing is DMB. I love DMB. I am the most active person on YouTube talking Dave Matthews Band, right? There's some podcasts and there's some also great content um, that I see and, and, I, and I actually listen to, but there's nobody on YouTube talking about these things weekly. I'm, I'm committed to now doing it two times a week. So definitely come along. If you want to be on the show, if you want to be with the camera, if you want to be audio only, you want to have discussions, you want to disagree with me, you want to have a healthy debate. I'm all about healthy debate. I take all opinions and we'll have a discussion, um, but feel free, hit me up, come on and just in the chat, say, hey, let's talk about this or let's talk about that. And I'll we'll, we'll bring you on, right? If you want to talk about something, if you want to, I'll send you a link to come into the stream. We could do that. So keep in mind that for Saturday, 10 p.m. Wednesday, Eastern time, 10 p.m. Saturday, Eastern time uh, is the, again, the stream schedule for 2022. Um, there may be some times I skip out life happens follow me on instagram and twitter concertviz34 and both of those and like i said please 
hit the like button, hit the comment, subscribe. If you if you're watch, shout out to everyone watching this on replay. Some of you guys, you, it's too late right now for you. you your school teachers, you gotta get up early, and you're gonna be watching this uh, Thursday or Friday morning, Friday afternoon, or even you, you wait till the weekend. You have some free time. Thank you guys who do watch. I do not take it for granted. I appreciate every single one of you, whether you comment. Well, I know a lot of people don't comment and you just watch this, but we got big things planned for 2022 for DNB for fish that I'll be going to my first fish show, everything again considered, and other acts that I go see, John Mayer, Umphreys McGee, hoping to get some hip-hop in. I want to see J. Cole if he does some sort of tour again. I want to see some other acts. Uh, I, I've been off hip-hop for a couple of years, mostly because my favorite acts don't aren't touring as much, but I love hip-hop, Nas, Jay-Z, Biggie, Tribe Called Quest, uh, Outkast, T.I., right, even out to the West Coast, Kendrick Lamar, and Tupac, and uh, E-40. I love hip-hop, too. I love jazz. I love blues. I love rock rock. I love pop rock, alternative rock, um, and pretty much everything in between. But thank you guys for watching. We're going to leave you guys on some bats and sessions as we do every, every night on this. But we're going to get something. All right, we're going to do Kill the King here. Thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. I got some awful news for you, sunshine, so late. In ballrooms and bathrooms, there's men playing games in the ballads that you and me. They say that they're fighting for us. But don't you believe that They're fighting to steal every penny They can get twisting God twisting love for the bad You save the world every time you walk
yeah, yeah.